Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the uh, 19K assignment. So uh, any questions you have, you can take a look at this and hopefully it'll help. All right, so let's start with number one. Cost of making X tennis rackets each day is given by this function here in dollars per racket. How many rackets should be made per day to minimize the cost per racket? So what we're basically looking at here is we've got X squared minus 20X plus 120. So this is a positive um, parabola here. So basically our graph is going to look something like this here, right? Not beautiful, but you get the idea. We're going to look for that minimum. We're going to look for that minimum number there. Okay, we could do this on the graphing calculator, or if we're using our calculus here, um, possibly a faster way is to take the derivative. And then we know that this here is a turning point, right? The minimum. So then we know that the tangent there would be equal to zero. So let's try that. So C prime of X is going to be two times X, right? So that's two X subtract one, that's one. And then that's X to the first one times negative 20 is negative 20. And then subtract one from that. So it's just our derivative is just two X minus 20. Okay. And again, we know that it's a minimum. So we know that it's the, the turning point. So we know that the, um, slope of the tangent has to equal zero. So this here, this 2x minus 20, has to equal zero. All right, so then we just solve for that. So plus 20, plus 20, we get 2x equals 20. So we get that x has to equal 10. Okay, so how many rackets should be sold to made to minimize the cost per racket? 10. And if you want to actually find what, what that cost is, because they didn't actually, actually ask you, just plug 10 back into the original function, and that'll tell you um, what your total cost is, right? Okay, so that's number one. Let's take a look at number two. All right, so here we have a uh, another parabola, okay, because it's t squared. Now, this is negative t squared, so this is going to be a upside down oops sorry so this is going to be an upside down parabola okay and so what we're looking for is we're looking for that maximum find the maximum height reach so we're looking for that max now since we're looking for the maximum height that's actually going to be the y not the x the x is going to give us how long it takes to get there and then the y is going to give us the max height so again we can still find this by simply finding the derivative, right? So h prime of t is, that's it's t to the first, so that's just 49. And then 2 times negative 9.8 is going to be negative 19.6. Subtract 1, and that's 19.6t. Okay, so again, we want that when the tangent, since it's the maximum, the tangent has to equal 0, so we're going to do 0 equals 49 minus 19.6t. So subtract 49 from both sides. We get negative, oops, 49 equals negative 19.6t. Divide both sides by 19.6, negative 19.6. And we get that t equals Let's see, let's just do 49 divided by 19.6, and that gives us 2.5, okay? Now again, that tells us how long it takes to get to the max height. We want to actually find the maximum height. So in order to find the maximum height, we, since we know it takes two and a half seconds to get up to this top point, we have to enter 2.5 into the original equation, because remember, to whenever you want to find your, your y value, you always got to plug it into the original equation. So we're going to do h at 2.5 seconds. The height at 2.5 is going to be 49 times 2.5 minus 9.8 times 2.5 squared. All right, let's make our life easy here and do this on the calculator. All right. All right, so entered it all in here. Push equals, and we got the height, and at two and a half seconds is going to be 
two, five, and this is in what, meters? Okay. So the max height of that stone is going to be 61.25 meters. All right. Okay. Let's move on to the next one, number five. So um, square corners are cut from a piece of cardboard, 40 by 25, and the edges are turned up to form an open box. What size squares must be removed to make a box of maximum volume? Okay, so this is a like a hard one to kind of understand what the heck they're talking about. So let me draw a picture here. I'm trying to draw a rectangle. That's not too shabby for for uh, my normal rectangles on this here. So what they're saying is you got this cardboard box. It's 40 by 25, right? And they're going to cut square corners out of this thing out of each side. Uh, sorry, out of each corner. And then what they're going to do is they're going to fold right along these dotted lines. And they're going to fold it up to make an open-topped box. Okay, so kind of almost think like think like a rectangular rectangular pizza box or something like that. Okay, so these pieces here are going to get cut out. All right, so what we need to do, what we know is that these lengths here are all X's, right? And then what we need to figure out is we need to figure out Let's see, it says what to make a box of maximum volume. Okay, so let's remember this. Volume is length times width times height. Okay, so we basically need this dimension, this dimension, and then the height. Okay, so if this whole thing here is 40, then this part just from here to here, we'll do this in a different color. So just from here to here is going to be the 40 but we're taking off both of these x's because we're cutting those x's out so it's 40 minus 2x here okay and this length from here so that's this length here and then this length from here to here again it starts we're at 25 but again we cut off two of those x's so minus 2x okay so if we're looking at our volume here we know that our let's just call our length as 40 minus 2x and our um, width let's call 25 minus 2x okay and then the height again this is going to be when you fold this piece up here again think of the the height of a pizza box really um, is just going to be this x so we multiply that by the x okay so this is going to be this is our volume equation okay uh, now, again, you could take this here and you could plug this into the graphing calculator and find that maximum, and that would work just fine, okay? But um, I'm going to show you how to do it with um, with our good old calculus here that we've been doing over this, this whole last chapter. So we're going to want to multiply these this all out here, right? Take the derivative and then set that derivative equal to zero, and solve it and figure out what our what our x's have to be okay and then we can plug it back in so um, let's multiply this thing out so I'm gonna do that over here so 40 minus 2x and 25 minus 2x okay so negative 2x times negative 2x is 4x squared negative 2x times 40 is negative 80x put a zero in there to hold the place 25 times negative 2x is negative 50x and then 25 times 40 let's see 25 times 4 is a hundred times that is going to be a thousand okay so we end up getting we multiply just those two there we get a thousand minus 130x plus 4x squared right now again we gotta take that and multiply it by another x so x times a thousand minus 130 x plus 4 x squared is going to give us a thousand x minus 130 x squared plus 4 x cubed right okay so now that's our that's our um, volume 
uh, function. So now we got to figure out, now we got to take the derivative and again set that derivative equal to zero. So um, this is x to the first, so that gives us, when we take the derivative, that's a thousand, right? Because that x goes away. Two times negative 130 is negative 260. And we take away one, and that's x to the first. Right? And then 3 times 4 is 12. Subtract 1 from that, and we got 12x squared. Okay, so there's our, there's our derivative. And again, we want to set that equal to 0. All right, so not terribly pleasant, but we can make this we can make this work. Now we could go through and we could try to factor this, or I'm thinking uh, I'm just going to cut to the chase and plug it into the quadratic formula, and that should tell us what x has to be. Okay, so x equals negative b plus or minus square root of four a. Oh, sorry, got ahead of myself of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x equals negative, or b is negative 260, plus or minus square root of negative 260 squared minus 4 times a is 1,000, and then c is 12 all oh sorry I actually got those backwards that's really this is this should be 12 let's just make this right sorry because this we've got this is C is a thousand B is negative 260 and a is 12 because it's written written out of order from what we're used to seeing it so there's our 12 and there's our thousand right all over. 2 times a, which is 12. So now we just got to go through and solve that. So I'm going to plug that into our uh, calculator and see what we get. Okay, so uh, I plugged all this stuff here under the radicand. That's what the under the radical is called. Plug that into the calculator here, which gives us 19,600. So really it's the square root of that. So square of that happens to be 140. So we get x equals negative negative 260 is 260 plus or minus 140 all over 24. So let's see, 260 plus 140 is going to be 260, 360, 400 over 24. And then if we do 260 minus 140, that's going to give us 120 over 24. So let's see what kind of answers those give us. All right, so 400 divided by 24 gives us that x 1.67, right? Sorry, I messed that up. 400 divided by 24 is 16.67. Okay, so 16.67, um, but if you think about that, if you take 16.67 here for x, another 16.67, that's 32, that's longer than that entire side is, so that, that answer can't even work. Uh, if you take 120 and divide it by 24, you should get 5, right? Yep, so that's x equals 5. So 5 is a reasonable answer. That will work. So you would need, so that means we would need to cut out 5 by 5 inch squares um, from each quarter. Okay. So that is what we need to end up cutting to make this box the maximum volume that it can possibly be. All right. That's optimization. And again, you can, once you get here, you really can put it into your graphing calculator, and this is going to end up giving us a, um, a positive parabola here. Oh, sorry, it's going to give us this uh, this cubed, and then you find the, if you can get get your window to zoom right, you can just find the maximum, and that should be when the x value is 5. All right? 
All right. Number seven. Duck Farmer wishes to build a rectangular enclosure of area 100 square meters. Farmer must purchase wire netting for three of the sides, and the four sides is an existing fence of another duck yard. Okay, so naturally the farmer wishes to maximize the length, and therefore the cost of the fencing required, minimize the length, sorry, to complete the job. Okay, so if the shorter sides here, well, you know, first off, let's draw a picture. So let's say here is the, let's draw the existing fence here in green. Okay, so this is existing. Okay, and so then what he's going to want to do, or she, whatever, is going to end up making a fence here, right? And again, he's already got an existing fence. And it says, if the shorter sides are of length x, so these are going to be length x, show that the required length of wire netting to be purchased has to be this, okay? So here's, here's how you want to think of this. Okay, so we know that the total area here is going to be 100 square meters. We know that this is x and this is x. So, part A, show if the shorter sides, if the shorter sides are of length x, show that the required length of wire netting to be purchased is this. Okay, so here's what we know. Those are length x. We're just going to have to, we don't know what this is. Let's call this y. So now we know that x times y has to equal 100, right? Uh, okay, we also know that the total length of the fence, the length of the fence is going to be x plus y plus x. So the nice way to write that is just 2x plus y, right? So let's do this. We want everything in terms of x, so let's get... Um, y by itself here. So this here, we, if we divide both sides by x, we get that y equals 100 over x. So wherever we see y down here, we can just plug in 100 over x. So we get L equals 2x plus 100 over x, which is what we're trying to get to. So L equals 2x plus 100 over x. All right, so that's part A. Now again, that's that's a little that's a little tricky. That took me a while to figure that out the first time as to how to come up with that. But um, once you've done that once or twice, then then it should make a little bit more sense. Okay. Um, use technology to help you sketch this sketch the graph of two x plus a hundred over x. So all right, let's put this in here. And we got y equals. So we've got two x plus a hundred over x. Okay, um, let's see, window. Um, so again, the x values are going to be positive, the y values are going to be positive, and the areas are going to be positive. So let's do uh, x minimum 0. Um, the x maximum on this, if it's 100, oops, sorry, the uh, x maximum here, if it's 100 square meters, 10 times 10 is going to be 100. So the max could possibly be really couldn't even be 10 but well could be 10 um, so let's put the max at 10 and then the y minimum is going to also be 0 and then the y value there um, could possibly be more than 10 let's maybe put it at say like 15 or or something like that and see what we see what we get okay so it's graphing and we get a whole bunch of nothing so let's figure out what's going on here Okay, so <clears throat> this the function that we put in here for y equals, this is the length function. So this the, the length of the fence is going to be more than 15. I was plugging in y as if it was this y down here, this, this missing side, but really the y is uh, representing the length here. So let's change, let's change our window. That, that x, y max is going to have to be a lot bigger. So let's try maybe say... Um, 100 feet. It could be that. It might even be more. Let's see. Um, this hopefully okay. That that now we can at least see part of the graph. So it comes down here, and you can tell it's going to bottom out somewhere down in here because it's starting to go back up here, right? So use technology to help you sketch the graph 
of that. Let's see. Let's let's go. Let's make X a little bit bigger, just so we can get a better idea of what's going on here. Let's change that into 50. Okay, so it comes down here and it zips up like that. Okay, so it does say that we want to sketch the graph. So let's sketch the graph. It comes down here and zips up like that. Okay, find the maximum value of L. Oh, sorry, the minimum value of L and the corresponding value of X when this occurs. So we want to find that minimum value down there, right? So, um, again, gosh, I mean, really, the, the nice way to do it is on the graphing calculator, right? Second calculate, we can find that minimum. We did that a whole bunch back in Chapter 17, so... Um, I'm kind of of the philosophy smarter not harder right so let's find that minimum enter and then we can enter this over here and so that X value is going to be at 7.07 .07, right so the X is going to be 7.07 okay and then Let's see, find the minimum value of L. So we want to find the total length here, right? So if we know that X is 7.07, .07, let's see. Oh, to find Y, we know that X times Y has got to equal 100, right? So X times Y equals 100. We now know that X is 7.07. .07. So 7.07 7 .07 Y equals 100. So let's divide by 7.07. .07, and we get that y equals, oops. So we do 100 divided by 7.07. .07, and we happen to get 14.14. So then the y here is 14.14. So those are the dimensions, right? So um, let's see corresponding value of X when this occurs find the minimum value of L so that's going to be so our total length is 2x plus y right so oops let's see this is 14.14 so our total length is going to be 2 times 7.07 .07 plus 14.14 okay so we can you can calculate it in your head or you can do it here Point oh seven plus fourteen point one four and we get twenty eight point two eight. Twenty eight point two eight meters is what they need. That's part C. Right? To the minimum value of L. Okay, and then skip the optimum situation with its dimensions. So here we go. That's what we just figured out here. So this is seven point oh seven. 7.07 .07, and then the y is 14.14 and these are all meters right okay that uh, should take care of seven here all right let's take a look at our last one which is number eight okay this one's kind of a doozy but that's all right it's a good challenging one Radioactive waste is to be disposed in fully enclosed lead boxes of inner volume 200 centimeters cubed. So this total volume in here is 200 centimeters cubed. That's important to know. The base of the box has dimensions in the ratio of 2 to 1. Okay, What's the inner length of the box? Okay, So let's see. If the base is 2 to 1, so like... This is definitely the short side, this is the long side. So if this is x and it's 2 to 1, this is going to have to be 2x, and that's x, and that's h, right? Okay, so that is going to be the length, the inner length of the box. So that's going to be 2x, right? Explain why x squared times h equals 100. So let's do this. Um, we know that our volume is 200, so let's do 200 is our volume and volume is length times width times height right so that's 2x times x times h so 200 equals 2x times x is 2x squared 
h, and we can divide both sides here by 2, and we get 100 equals x squared h, which is what we have up there. Okay? C, explain why the inner surface area of the box is given by this lovely formula here. So the inner surface area of the box, we've got to find the area of each of the six inner pieces here, right? So let's take the time to figure that out. So let's say this front face here. So the front and back, because this front face here and then this back, back here, are both going to be 2x times h. So that's 2x times h. The Let's see, let's go with, say, the left and right side here is going to be this and this, and that's going to be x times h, x times h. And then the, let's see, let's go to the uh, top and the bottom. So that's this and this is going to be 2x times x. Okay, so, um, and of course we're going to, since there's two of each of these, we're going to want to double each one of those, right? So, to find the total surface area, we're going to add all of these together. So we have 2x times h times 2 plus x times h times 2 plus 2x times x times 2. So let's simplify that as much as we can. So that's 4xh plus 2xh plus, let's see, 2x times x is 2x squared, and we multiply that by 2, and that gives us 4x squared. Right, so we got 4xh and 2xh, so let's combine that together to get 6xh plus 4, oops, plus 4x squared. Okay, so that's the total, that's the total surface area, right, is this. So, um, to show that it's got this here, we need to get everything in terms of x. So basically, we got to get rid of that h. So what we want to do is use this here and solve this for h. So let's see, let's do let's do that over here. So we have x squared h equals 100. So if we solve that for h, we divide both sides by x squared, right? And we get that h is 100 over x squared. So now we can take this. Uh, 100 over x squared and plug it in for this h right here. So let's do this. We've got 6x and now the h is 100 over x squared plus 4x squared. Right? So we've got 6x times 100. So that's 600x over x squared plus 4x squared, and then one of these x's up here can reduce with one of these x's down there. So that gives us 600 over x plus 4x squared, which is what we have, 600 over x plus 4x squared. Okay, so that was part C. Again, that's kind of a doozy, but um, this is going to end up helping us out here. Okay, use technology to help sketch the graph of this what we just found 4x squared plus 600 over x so let's pull up our calculator enter that in and see what we got all right so let's see 600 over x plus 4x squared okay oops 4x squared like that all right so, now, again, the usually the challenging part is to figure out what our window is going to be. So, again, let's see. It's a vol total volume of 200 centimeters cubed. Let's see. This formula here is A is the area. So, the that's going to be our Y value. So, that could be pretty big. The X isn't going to be super 
enormous, but it should be pretty good size. Um, let's see, why maximum? Let's just let's increase that to maybe 500 just to just to see. So let's just see what we get. Okay, that gives us enough to figure out what we need, right? So what we are, let's see, it says, sorry, use technology to help sketch the graph of y equals 4x squared. So here's our, here's our graph. We know it's going to come down and go like that. And we're going to need to find that there eventually, right? So, um, Actually, I guess it's not asking that yet. It's going to ask us for that on E, but it says use technology to graph. So there's our graph. Okay, Find the minimum inner surface area of the box and the corresponding value of, of X. So again, our, since they've already had us, have us using the calculator, let's use our calculate, and let's calculate the minimum. All right. So let's see, X is 25. Let's see if we can find where that is apparently it's back over here. Got to keep going until that cursor eventually shows up. Okay, I'm going to pause it and get it, find it. Okay, there it is. So we know that's to the left of the minimum. So we'll push enter and then we move this thing over to the right of the minimum. Push enter again and then enter one more time and we get that the x value's got to be 4.5. Two two it looks like, okay. So, x. Let's see. Find the mim minimum inner surface area of the box with corresponding, and the corresponding value of x. So, x is. Oops, I missed it already. Four point two two. And then the nice part about this is, um, this. A is the area, so that's actually going to be that's going to be our y value, which is 213.4. So the area, 213.4 centimeters squared. Let's see, inner surface area. That's the surface area here, and the x value is 4.22. Okay, so um, we've that was the tough part. Now draw a sketch of the optimum box shape with dimensions shown. So x is going to be 4.22. This is twice x. So that's going to be 8.44, right? And then our height, let's see. We can find that, I suppose, with this one here. So just do a different color so we can use this area over here. So we know that x. So we have x squared times h is 100. We know that x is 4.22. So 4.22 squared times h is 100. So let's figure out what 4.22 squared is. 4.22 squared gives us 17.8 is 100. So we divide both sides by 17.8. And we get that h equals 5.5. Um, let's go with 5.62. All right, so this h here then is going to be 5.62 centimeters. Right, these are all centimeters centimeters and centimeters all right so that's uh that's part f so we've done all of those all right if you have any other questions about any part of this uh assignment please feel free to ask in class all right